Hello friends, welcome back to innovations in marketing and marketing of innovations. Now, we would be dwelling upon the elements of marketing mix with reference to innovation in marketing and we would be structurally going towards understanding two aspects for a while at least for a few sessions from now. One is looking for innovation within one of the P's that is aspects or elements of marketing mix and on the other side looking at that part which we have discussed in consonance with other P's. For example, now I would be taking you towards a perspective around how to look at innovations within a product sphere that is some elements and aspects of product and then I would be building upon the case which we have been dwelling upon by talking about countering commoditization that is value added strategies and aligning with customers you know alignment of the same with customers and then slightly towards the side of as far as how is it related to other piece you know a, a brief discussion discussion on that because we have to build around that situation and we have to tell ourselves that while we are talking about value chain uh, marketing or let us say innovation with a perspective of value chain marketing then we also have to look into interrelationship of all the aspects which we are dwelling upon but it would be more slightly more structured and focus in terms of elements now onwards. So, uh, let us break the discussion with the perspective of few aspects which I feel are very important about as far as uh, product goes and uh, then I would be coming to as far as you know countering commoditization goes and uh, how these things are associated with each other. Now, let us say you know when do you think that Coca Cola would have decided to increase the size of the bottles probably when they were actually focusing upon increasing the sales volume. So, did Pepsi would have done that and that is how probably they would have come for as far as you know family bottles go or family packs go. Now, Coca Cola to be brought in for family as such the big bottle and when we are thinking in these kind of things do you look at this as a concentric innovation around packaging that is what we are referring to when we are talking of elements of marketing and when we are talking of elements of product per se then packaging is a very important aspect and when we are talking about packaging we are looking at the complete value chain at this moment because coca cola is uh, as as far I, as I understand is not producing its own bottles. So, they have to go for you know their vendors, their vendors have to upgrade in terms of production of these kind of bottles might not be a huge technological change required for that, but then they have to look into the supplies and on the other side the vendors of Coca Cola who are associated with them in distribution setup they have to look for casings which can carry these large bottles. Then probably their transporters or their transportation, uh, transportation system also has to accommodate that kind of a size with some adjustments and then their retailers and their you know uh, as far as godowns go or, or storage facility goes they have to think about those kind of things and they have to recalibrate as far as the uh, you know, number of cases go and those kind of things are also associated there. Their counting procedures also have to be augmented somehow and then their retailers also have to think in terms of adjusting that space within their space that is one direct element associated with that. But then comes in how families would be looking at themselves as far as their consumption goes we understand that they would have started consuming it more at one go for example families would have started consuming that during lunches or dinners all together opening coca cola bottle instead of water but how coke actually went for motivating them to do that then comes in advertising business which is associated with coca cola and everything you know as, as far as the whole system starts percolating around as far as you know developing upon uh, this kind of simple packaging change. This is just a narrative, but true to its last point 
And if you will start drawing these elements around, you would realize that packaging is a very, very important aspect of when companies they start thinking in terms of you know developing uh, let us say the sales volume in simple terms. And definitely what we are talking is talking about is intensely associated with as far as innovation goes. And this is a famous story and I have been talking about these kind of things in my other subjects especially product and brand management wherein IKEA furnitures they started going for rectangular boxes and they augmented the complete manufacturing strategy and process around rectangular boxes. Their storage system around rectangular boxes, their transportation system and everything, almost everything. It is a very famous story and you would find so many uh, you know YouTube movies or films on that and you would find so many cases and articles on that just serve for IKEA furnitures and their rectangular box system basically. And you would realize probably someone intelligently thought about that rectangular boxes are easy to transport or easy to store, but then putting all sizes of furniture dismantling those and adjusting them into rect rectangular boxes requires lots of designing element associated with that and that designing element is not just design, you have to augment all the manufacturing processes. I do not understand manufacturing to the length where you know some of my colleagues do or some of my friends do and many of you would be doing. But definitely it requires lots of augmentation in raw material processing, then uh, you know manufacturing processes, machine readjustments, cutting and uh, you know uh, readjustments on almost every account. So how they would have designed this complete structure, they would not have experimented on one or two because for this you have to recalibrate the process, the complete thing basically and that is what innovation is, we are talking about product and the elements of product here. And these are very important examples because we are talking of organizations which rely on sales, sales volume, which are present largely around the world in terms of as far as the whole situation goes. And you see then there are some more you know for example water bottles, water bottles have crossed a complete cycle, they started from a mid size you know 750 ml if I not, I am not wrong and then they went to 1 liter and then they went to 2 liters and 5 liters and larger cans then they now they are back to 200 ml and they want to increase consumption by reducing the size of the bottles. Now that is again a you know particular kind of a strategic orientation which Bisslery and uh, several other companies they are they are looking at and uh, you know IDEO is a company which looks into designs of products and integration of the complete system as far as uh, processing goes and uh, if you want to dwell into details of how what we are talk, uh, you know, talking about here, you may uh, refer to uh, my sessions on design thinking in product and brand management courses and other courses and innovation business uh, you know, model courses wherein I have tried to elaborate upon design thinking and many other speakers there and uh, you know uh, academicians and uh, practitioners they have been talking about design thinking with an integration of everything into one. But IDEO practically does that, so just serve their website. But one example which might elaborate on few things and you would realize that for example some airlines if I remember correctly contacted them that uh, their long distance flights customers do not feel so comfortable as far as economy class goes especially and that is why uh, their seats are vacant on long distance flights and if you count the amount they are losing in terms of vacant seats uh, that probably is huge that is adding to lots of you know reduced profits or probably losses and so on. IDEO started thinking in terms of uh, marketing research told that airlines that this is largely the reason they contacted their customers, they contacted their vendors and so on. And uh, when you are talking of 15 hours or 20 hours or, or 16, 18 hours flights then definitely you know comfort matters a lot. The, the point is that somehow uh, this, this element of as far as you know long distance flights goes, so IDEO started redesigning the seats. It is it's an important puzzle I have detailed upon this kind of a thing uh, you know different subjects, but just to give you a brief account of for looking into redesigning of seats you cannot reduce the space as far as number of seats go, now that is a puzzle. So redesigning the seat structure without changing the dimensions in totality as far as the space within the plane goes that is what is required. But 
the lesson here is that if you innovate upon that kind of a thing some postural innovation some seat innovation some cushion space innovation and some those kind of things and uh, probably one or two sessions back i talked about a company which actually you know uh, reduced the the height of the seat uh, so that you know this this uh, automotive automotive manufacturer could have some larger uh, headroom and so on those kind of adjustments are very important due course of time so ido designed those seats for that airlines and to cut the long story short it actually started bringing them full load which got converted into their profits in due course of time as far as the whole situation goes what we are talking about here is product augmentation product augmentation within that the elements of product augmentation for example design for example packaging and pure packaging you know uh, ikea and coca cola and these kind of organizations are there as far as uh, those things go today uh, there are several kinds of for example housing communities they are designing a complete product package around the living of people there so they design children parks they design clubs community clubs wherein you would be living and participating with each other and they even design futuristic activities when people would start shifting into colonies and that is the co complete package which they are selling you that they they want to tell you that we are trying to bring a life around when you stay in particular kind of a locality which we are building for you that is why they call it townships so complete club system and entertainment system and gym system and so on and uh, recreation systems and even education systems and health systems associated with these kind of things basically go you look at symphony coolers for example and you would realize that symphony actually relied upon the complete system of as far as the casing or the coverage of de, you know the cover design of the coolers go uh, engines or mo motors or or let's say fan or the speed of the fan definitely is a technical perspective but outer and exterior kind of a thing and to adjust the height or length or width of the cooler they definitely would have brought in some technological changes as far as the fan system goes and those kind of systems goes which is very very interesting if you will go into their story and symphony in the era of air conditioning did exceptionally well as far as the complete system goes just visit their website and you would realize uh, you know the whole system uh, how it uh, developed i can you know enumerate several examples for example you know uh, several companies which are in bathroom fittings they create so many showers to so that water can be conserved and uh, and and uh, you know uh, the pleasure of taking bath in a shower doesn't reduces and so on that kind of some you know uh, as far as technological input and plus you know consumer sa uh, customer satisfaction and the design and aesthetics come in all together in one go plus then they have to look into what kind of uh, you know situation would be available in flats and houses for their things to be fitted in who is going to do that they look into complete value chain system as far as the complete scenario goes you see we are talking about very interesting elements of product changes or elements of product which can be changed and then the association of the whole situation with the complete value chain in due course of time simple lighting if you have to change the lights of a room basically then whole lot of a situation gets involved uh, starting from you know the fittings to uh, how the light would get switched on and so on and and, and we have been talking about you know this uh, leds which are uh, mobile controlled leds application control leds and so on wherein color also changes and the light gets dim and light gets light gets uh, you know brightened up and so on and that takes us towards a situation wherein after a particular stage you might require only one light in whole uh, of the room wherein you actually wanted to fit in several lights and so on same happens with curtains and same happens with furnishings and so on so you see uh, that is the perspective around when we when we talk of uh, as far as the elements of product and story started from family bottles of coca cola and uh, you know whole whole situation goes so and and when we start and, and uh, what i would try to advise you is that just don't uh, you know just go just don't go for random uh, picturization or visualization of how uh, packaging would affect the complete value chain system try and enumerate start from the concentric change in the packaging and then try and 
draw a line from left to right or right to left and visualizing that what kind of effects would be generated in the complete value chain of that soft ring manufacturer alongside what kind of technological augmentation and market augmentations the uh, vendors or the partners would have brought in what uh, try to detail upon almost every single element imagine that it's not difficult to uh, to be done just try and do that and then you would realize that whole lot of a system uh, you know works in association with each other now uh, let me take you towards as far as you know uh, the aspect of escaping the commoditization or countering commoditization and story is being built upon from where we were there in terms of you know when authors uh, Kashani K and Jeanet J and Horowitz J and Mihan S and Ryan's A and Turpin D and Walsh J in their book Beyond Traditional Marketing Innovations in Marketing Practice John Wiley and Sons when they start talking about commoditization as an element which happened in due course of time and how countering that is associated with innovation marketing. So, when all customers appear to look alike and the firm's value offer has a one size fits all quality, both features of many commoditized markets, it is time to ask a couple of fundamental questions as the author says. Beyond the lowest price, what do customers really value? Because you have reached to that point wherein price war has stagnated more or less. How could the commoditized offer product or service be redefined to better reflect the often unarticulated needs of its customers. We can identify these three possible strategic trajectories that can bring much needed differentiation to a commoditized core that is targeted extension, system development and solutions innovation. And here story becomes more interesting because we have tried to dwell upon uh, micro segments and targeting a lot actually. So, uh, you know that is how authors would be taking to you in, in terms of as far as this, this uh, two dimensional structure goes wherein a matrix sort of a thing comes in wherein you know uh, at one end it is core and you see the axis says that value added through bundling that is the vertical axis the horizontal axis is value added through segmentation and customization and here I want you to read it as we have talked about micro segments and targeting individual level targeting more or less. So, but the situation must move towards three of the directions one is system development the other is solutions innovation and the other is targeted extension. Most idealistic form would emerge somehow, but, but let us talk about these three uh, one by one. So, core is low on both value added dimensions as well as uh, you know uh, the, the other part of as far as uh, value added through segmentation or micro segmentation and customization. So, it is a starting point where offer lacks sufficient differentiation to avoid becoming a commodity. It is reaching to that point of stage wherein everything has got standardized more or less. Customers do not perceive compelling differences between the firm and its rivals in their value proposition and they say by this or by that it does not matter, it is all one or the same. Even computers and laptops they have more or less are reaching to that stage of when you talk to many people you know are you happy with your laptop? Yes. What difference does it make? Not much. So, this kind of a product also except for few mobile phones largely all the mobile phones people have stopped flaunting their mobile phones probably mobile phone companies are listening to this targeted extension this quadrant represents a strategy that aims to add value by extending its core offer to more closely meet the special and possibly unique needs of the market segments or micro segments or even the individual accounts it serves targets. And you see here the most important element you must remember is that we have focused a lot on as far as targeting goes, focus upon that thing. By becoming more insightful about the special requirements of different end user companies are better able to match it offer its offer to customer needs. They may decide to pursue a dual strategy of offering the under adapted core product to some customers and the more targeted ones to others. Then comes in system development that is on the vertical axis. So, firms develop a package of products and services that offer the synergistic benefits of a system. We talked about category marketing and family marketing and those kind of things we, we already discussed earlier. In other words, the value added lies in the integration among the systems constituent elements that is the bundled 
whole is larger than the sum of its part. We talked about products and services as well. We talked about the products wherein you know you sell the product, but after sales service is the most important part along with that product. So, that is the bundling situation which comes here. So, a firm may choose to offer the system concept in addition to its core product or as a replacement for it. So, solutions innovation targeted extension we have discussed solutions innovation it is the strategic scenario where value creation takes an ambitious turn away from the core business and addresses specific customer problems with specific solutions solutions that combine tangible products with highly focused intangible services as technical advice training consulting and the like this is what largely most of the companies they are doing famous stories are like IBM which converted in itself into a solutions company another famous story can be Amazon which now is focusing upon consulting and software development as well in terms of as far as retail system goes Accenture probably you know they started uh, from the side of accounting more becoming a consultant in almost all the spheres at this moment almost all the consulting companies they have passed through these kind of phases and you know compositively including almost everything in due course of time and I would be coming to you with a very interesting case which is large enough to be understood with this kind of a perspective. So, a firm planning to enter the solutions business needs to think outside the box obviously they have to do that and that is what we are talking about in this subject innovations in marketing and reinvent what the industry has traditionally defined as value solutions strategy demands innovation in value creation and promises attractive margins BYD that is the most important example we could fetch in terms of as far as their you know size and growth through whatever we are talking and what we are talking about here is solutions innovation you see that is the most important thing which one has to understand look at this is a Chinese conglomerate manufacturing company that was founded in 1995 the company started as a rechargeable factory manufacturer and through their innovations developed into one of the biggest player in the electric vehicle manufacturing. It is the largest at this moment. The core of BYD was their expertise in manufacturing batteries quickly becoming a major player in mobile phone battery market. Mobile phone was growing at that time they were definitely on the right track. Targeted extension wherein BYD soon shifted from its core into different extensions BYD electronics became this extension into 2007 as they started manufacturing mobile phone components also along with the batteries. We have just talked about this and their progression justifies all the four quadrants in some or the other way. System development BYD having excelled in rechargeable battery market developed their system further into building batteries for automotives. They were into energy storage largely. So, they started traversing and integrating the complete systems and manufacturing systems into one it was not just batteries as the company also ventured into generating energy after that they realized that some form of integration is required because we are into storage why not to generate especially focusing on manufacturing solar panels they definitely were at the right track. Solutions innovation came in when BYD created an ecosystem of the products and offerings that emphasized on renewable energy. The company moved to automobile, electric cars, buses, trucks, monorails while still having their stronghold over battery manufacturing just visit their website it looks beautiful and that is how the whole situation came in. And you know that is the perspective on as far as the whole system goes so uh, he correlated with as far as the four quadrants and the businesses of BYD goes. So, core rechargeable battery and then targeted extension mobile phone components and BYD electronics and then you know in systems development solar panels energy generation battery technologies and solutions innovation automobile rail transit and energy. BYD 7 plus 4 full market EV strategy that is what they talk about. So, the 7 plus 4 full market electric vehicle strategy aims to replace all fossil fuel consumption in the road transport field with electricity. The strategy was to transform 7 conventional types of transportation and 4 specialized types of transportation in terms of as far as 7 plus 4 goes. Source is given at the foot of the slide you may please visit that and 7 conventional fields buses, coaches, taxis, sanitation vehicles, construction vehicles, logistic vehicles, passenger vehicles and four specializes mining sites, 
harbors, warehouses and airports. And look at, look at the statistics, you know, it is very interesting. Global plug-in electric vehicle market share in 2022 by main manufacturer BYD holds 18.4 percent, which is way ahead of second contender that is 13 percent held by Tesla. Then Volkswagen 8.2 percent and SAIC 7.2 percent and Green Volvo Car Group is 6 percent. And here comes revenue of BYD Group from 2010 to 2022 in billion yuan. It has more almost doubled. No, yeah, yeah, almost doubled. Yes, 424.06 billion yuan. Huge revenue growth between two years. And then you know if you will look at this growth, this is how it goes. And that is where this example you know ends telling us that fundamentally let us look at the different elements of product, put them with a concentric value, let us say product design, let us say packaging, let us say you know as far as or any other element for that matter and then look at how it traverses along the value chains in terms of innovation in marketing goes. On one side we are looking at innovation in marketing with that kind of a perspective alongside the value chain augmentation, complete value chain augmentation and to understand that you know as far as countering commoditization perspective given by authors go it is very helpful. So, we can look at this four quadrant situation by putting any of the conglomerates or any of the organization not even if it is not that much diversified to look into how it started from core towards system development towards target extension and towards solution innovation you would find as I said BYD is the example which we have discussed then you can think in terms of several others you know uh, IBM some automotive manufacturers some conglomerates which traversed from this you know with a similar technological orientation from automotives towards aeroplane manufacturing or development or engine development or technological development integrating you know software technology into the complete situation. In retail uh, we have several such kinds of examples and so on. I will be coming back to you with lots of insight on how everything can be seen with the perspective of branding as well. And that will make our discussion slightly more interesting before I would be taking you towards the other elements of marketing mix as I promised in the beginning of this session like pricing and even promotion and distribution in due course of time. But let us talk about branding first because we are talking of product. So, it makes lot of sense when we talk of branding in association with the discussion of product which we are having. I will be coming back to you with a discussion on branding in my next session till then. Goodbye.